In this video, you'll get to know everything about GPS. What is GPS? How it is evolved? Segments of GPS Principle behind the GPS technology Signal structure of space vehicle Course acquisition PRN code generation At the end of the video you will understand everything about GPS inside out. Let's get into the video. Questions like, where am I? Where am I going? Where are you? What is the best way to get there? When will I get there? GPS technology can answer all these questions. GPS satellite can show you exact position on the Earth anytime, in any weather, no matter where you are. But how? You will get to know in further but before going to that let's understand what exactly is GPS? The Global Positioning System, is a satellite-based navigation system, made up of a network of 24 satellites, placed into orbit by the U.S. Department of Defense, that continuously transmit coded information, which makes it possible to precisely identify locations on Earth, by measuring the distance from the satellites. In the picture you can see, 24 satellites orbiting around the Earth, in planar orbits. The satellites transmit, very low power specially coded radio signals, that can be processed in a GPS receiver, enabling receiver to compute position, velocity, and time, thus, allowing anyone with a GPS receiver to determine their location on Earth. Four GPS satellite signals are used to compute positions in three dimensions. The technology evolved from, Mr. Marconi's transmission of radio waves. Throughout the 1960s, the U.S. Navy and Air Force worked on a number of systems, that would provide navigation capability for a variety of applications. In 1973 finally, the U.S. Department of Defense, decided that the military had to have a super-precise positioning system. In short, development of the GPS satellite navigation system, was begun in the 1970s by the U.S. Department of Defense. The basis for the new system, was atomic clocks carried on satellites, a concept successfully tested in an earlier Navy program called Timation. The Air Force operated the new system, which it called, the Navstar Global Positioning System. It has since come to be known simply as GPS. The first GPS satellite, was launched in 1978, and a second generation set of satellites, was launched beginning in 1989. Today's GPS constellation consists of, at least 24 Block 2 satellites. A full constellation of 24 satellites, was achieved in 1994. GPS was originally intended for military applications, but in the 1980s, the government made the system available for civilian use. Now, let's have a look at the segments of GPS. GPS system is comprised of three segments. They are, Space Segment, Control Segment, User Segment Space Segment The GPS technology is based on the Navstar, Navigation Satellite Timing and Ranging, constellation composed of 24 satellites in space, this is the space segment of the GPS system. There are often, more than 24 operational satellites, as new ones are launched to replace older satellites. The satellite orbits repeat almost the same ground track once each day. These 24 satellites, are in six circular planar orbits, equally spaced, at an inclination angle of 55 degrees, to Earth's relative equator. These satellites travel at speeds of about 14,000 km per hour or 8,700 miles per hour with a 1-2 HR period, precisely 1-1 HR 58 minutes. Each satellite transmits, the following four informations called, navigation or NAV message, as a part of its signal, to ground stations and users are. 1. Ephemeris position information, 2. Almanac, 3. Atmospheric data, 4. Clock correction. Control segment. It consists of a system of tracking stations, located around the world. The control segment is composed of, all the ground-based facilities, that are used to monitor and control the satellites. This segment, is usually unseen by the user, but is a vital part of the system. The Navstar control segment, 
called the Operational Control System OCS, consists of five monitor stations, a master control station MCS and three uplink antennas. The satellites sent down, subsets of the orbital ephemeris data. The monitor stations track, GPS satellites in view, collect and send information from the satellites, back to the master control station, that computes the precise orbits. The master station, uploads the data, which is necessary for proper operation of the satellite, like ephemeris, and clock data to the satellites. Then, the information is formatted into updated navigation messages, that are transmitted through ground antennas. User Segment The user segment, is composed of GPS receivers, composed of processors and antennas, that allow for sea, land, and airborne operators, to receive the broadcast. The receivers, convert space vehicle signals into position, velocity, and time. A total of four satellites, are required to compute these calculations. In order to make this simple calculation, the GPS receiver has to know two things. One the location of at least three satellites above you or even four for accurate position. Two the distance between you and each of those satellites. The GPS receiver figures, both of these things out by analyzing high frequency, low power radio signals from the GPS satellites. Better units have multiple receivers, so they can pick up signals from several satellites simultaneously. A typical GPS receiver consists of an L-band receiver, antennas which receives GPS signals and determine pseudo-ranges to determine from which satellite the signal came from. Now that we know about what GPS is and what GPS has, let's see the working principle behind GPS, called trilateration. Trilateration is, the measurement of distance between the receiver and the satellites. The satellites also tell us, exactly where they are in their orbits, above the Earth. It works something like this, if we know our exact distance from a satellite in space, we know, we are somewhere, on the surface of an imaginary sphere, with radius equal to the distance to the satellite radius. By measuring, its distance from a second satellite, the receiver knows it is also somewhere on the surface of a second sphere, with radius equal, to its distance from the second satellite. Therefore, the receiver, must be somewhere along a circle, which is formed from the intersection of the two spheres. Measurement from a third satellite introduces a third sphere. Now, there are only two points, which are consistent, with being at the intersection of all three spheres. One of these, is usually impossible, and the GPS receivers have mathematical methods, of eliminating the impossible location. Measurement from a fourth satellite now resolves, the ambiguity as to which of the two points, is the location of the receiver. The fourth satellite point, also helps eliminate certain errors in the measured distance, due to uncertainties in the GPS receiver's timing as well. Here's how GPS works in five logical steps. 1. The basis of GPS is trilateration from satellites. 2. To trilaterate, a GPS receiver measures distance, using the travel time of radio signals. 3. To measure travel time, GPS needs very accurate timing, which it achieves with some tricks. 4. Along with distance, you need to know exactly, where the satellites are in space. High orbits and careful monitoring are the secret. 5. Finally, you must correct for any delays, the signal experiences as it travels through the atmosphere. Let's see the structure of space vehicle signal. To transmit satellite vehicle signals, there are two transmission channels. L1 and L2. These carry a carrier frequencies of L1 at 1575 MHz and L2 at 1227 MHz. The three signals that are superimposed on these two carrier waves are 1 CA code 2 navigation message, NAV message 3 P code Let's see what those signals are. CAPRN code at 1.023 MHz. Course acquisition code, is a pseudo-random code, with which receiver will come to understand, from which satellite a signal came from. Each satellite, has its own CAPRN code, to get identified by the GPS receiver. 
This code, is used by the civilians so, this code is transmitted through L1 carrier wave. P code at 10.23 MHz. It is also a pseudo-random code, to identify from which satellite a signal came from. But, it is a private and precise code enabling, the receiver to get more accurate results, and only used for military purpose. But, there may be cases, where civilians also use this code. So this code is transmitted on L1 and L2 carrier waves. NAV message. This is the real information of the satellite signal, that is carried on both L1 and L2 carrier waves. CA code and NAV message is added, that is, modulo 2 sum, that is, if sum of the two signals is odd then, signal stays at 1, and if even, stays at 0, and that added result is mixed with L1 carrier wave and its result is mixed. With the P code and sends output as L1 signal. P code and NAV message is added, and mixed with L2 carrier wave and sends output as L2 signal. These CA and P codes are called pseudo random codes, because, each satellite produces a random code, which looks random, but deterministic just like the numbers after the decimal in pi value, which look random but very deterministic. Let's see how the course acquisition PRN code is generated. Course acquisition code frequency is 1.023 MHz, which is much lesser frequency than P code and that is why, it is only used by civilians not militaries. CAPRN code transmission rate is 1023 Mbps that is, for one message 1023 bits are sent. All 1023 bits, are generated and sent by each satellite, for every millisecond. Number of bits in a message. Depends on, number of bits you want to use to develop the CA code. Here we use 10 bits to do so. Each CA code from each satellite, is produced by combining two 10-bit streams and those are combined, based on 10-state linear feedback system. These two 10-bit streams bits, go through manipulation under two generator polynomials. We use the following polynomials, to manipulate the two 10-bit streams, in such a way that, they'll produce a unique code to each satellite. Polynomial 1 1 plus x cube and x power 10 Third and tenth bit positions are added or modulo 2 sum i.e., if the sum of those two bits are odd. It stays at 1 and if even it stays at 0. And polynomial 2 1 plus x square and x cube and x power 6 plus x power 8 plus x power 9 plus x power 10. In this 2, 3, 6, 8, 9, 10 bit positions are added or modulo 2 sum. Here, we are combining the two 10 bit streams, and delaying one of the two bit streams, by an integer number of periods, and this delay period is unique to each satellite. We also, use a unique phase tap to each satellite, to produce a unique CA code. Example of CA PRN code generation for space vehicle 1. One 10 bit stream is manipulated by the polynomial 1, and other 10 bit stream is manipulated by polynomial 2. Initially, the two 10 bit streams are reset to ones at the start of millisecond. According to polynomial 1, the third and tenth bit positions are added 1 plus 1 equals 2, even, stays at 0 and the result 0 of. This is again stored in the initial bit of the first 10 bit stream and then all bits are shifted one bit right, and whatever the bit, in 10 bit position, that output bit is the input bit to the second polynomial, here it is bit 1. In polynomial 2, 2, 3, 6, 8, 9, 10 position bits are added 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 6, even, stays at 0, and the result 0 is stored in the initial bit of second 10 bit stream. The phase tap positions of the satellite vehicle 1 is 2 and, is the second and sixth bit positions of second polynomial is added with the output of the first polynomial, 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3, odd, stays at 1, and all bits are shifted 1 bit to write in. Polynomial 2. Whatever the output generated by adding the phase tap position bits and output of the first polynomial is the first bit of the CAPRN code, the same process is done, for the generation of second, third, 
fourth, 1023 bits of CAPRN code, and this process, is repeated for 1023 times and sends the message to receiver. For 1024 time, again it resets all bits to ones in both polynomial 1 and 2 and repeats the entire process for 1023 times in millisecond. When the receiver receives this code bit stream, then it starts shifting back one unit at a time, until the two matches, and then observe how many units are apart, and what delay was on the second bit stream compared to first bit stream and knows from which satellite it came from, because each satellite will delay a specific number of integer periods as we using phase taps. The last column in the diagram will be the CAPRN code for satellite 1 with 1024 bits long 1100, 100, 0001. Here are some of the applications of GPS. GPS on airplanes. GPS on horticulture. There are also some disadvantages of GPS. Like. Sometimes, your GPS may fail in the middle of your way to some destination, then you need have backup plan like maps. GPS may not be accurate sometimes, due to obstacles like buildings, extreme atmospheric conditions. Using a GPS in a battery operated device, then a battery will be dead at some time, then you need to have an external power supply, where it is not always possible. There must be always a clear line of sight between satellites and antennas, otherwise GPS will not work properly. Now we can conclude the topic by saying that GPS is rapidly changing the way people are finding their way around the Earth. Whether it is for fun, saving lives, getting there faster or whatever use you can dream of, GPS navigation is becoming more common every day. I will upload the link down below for a detailed report on everything about GPS. Check it out. With that being said, yeah, I hope you guys understood the topic. Please subscribe like and comment for any updates on my channel.